so yeah uh, it's amazing we we are going through a journey together uh, when it comes to working remotely um, in my part i would like to share with you how you can scale a shiny dashboard so let's take a look at uh, first let me introduce myself uh, my name is Damian Jevish. I'm uh, one of the founders of Epsilon. I have worked with uh, many different languages like Scala, C Sharp, uh, Python, C++, and JavaScript. Uh, and I always like to combine all the knowledge from different technologies and uh, apply it to R and Shiny. Uh, I must say that uh, throughout my experience, I have never seen a language uh, with a library that are so fast to uh, build uh, great looking applications that uh, are then used in production. Uh, so short agenda, I'm going to start with an introduction that uh, then I will give you an overview of the scaling and uh, some details on how you make your, how you can make your applications faster uh, with just a few simple rules. So this is you and your team. Uh, thanks to Olga Talk and to your knowledge, you already built the workflow for, for, your, uh, for your team. And uh, knowing Shiny and uh, making your application beautiful uh, you deploy an application that is uh, available in production for your users. And then you start uh, having uh, people using it. Uh, first, this is one person. Suddenly, there is a little bit more of them. And you get the feedback. And I really like this slide because it sums up our experience uh, uh, when we talk to different clients. Uh, there is always someone who uh, created like this new, fresh change in the company. They introduced Shiny. They suddenly built an application that everyone likes. And uh, people just love the application. The features are added fast because of the fact that Shiny is so robust. And the application does exactly what people need uh, in their daily job. Um, and probably a lot of you know this uh, well. Uh, however, suddenly you have so many people using your application uh, that the application starts getting slow. And this is usually when we uh, jump in and uh, help companies uh, organize their code and uh, make sure that they can scale uh, to a lot of uh, people. Because the fact is that Shiny is fast. R2 the Connect is fast and allows you to scale even up to 10,000 users, uh, but it needs to be implemented in a given way with a given in architecture. And I'm going to share with you uh, what has to be done in order to achieve such scaling. So first of all, let's look uh, at Shiny. There are two ways that you can scale your application. The first one is vertical scaling. This is increasing the amount of users that you have for one machine. And the other part is horizontal scaling, which means uh, adding as many machines as you want just to make sure that the application uh, runs for, covers for uh, as many people as you want. So one thing to know is that you should first work on vertical scaling uh, so that your application is fast and, uh, and very robust, and then you can add as many machines as you want. Otherwise, you're going to use a lot of resources. So for the first one, um, there are three basically uh, key things that you can do. Um, first one is leverage frontend, which is to use JavaScript to handle fast user interactions uh, that do not change the data and that, uh, so that you don't have to actually communicate with the server that often. Uh, the second part is to extract computations, uh, to handle the resource intensive operations away from the application uh, so that, excuse me, quick check. Um, so that uh, the server itself isn't that overloaded with the computations. And uh, the third one is to set the right architecture that I'm going to show you as well. One thing that you should keep in mind is if you want your Shiny application to be fast and if you want it to uh, work for many users, you should make sure that the Shiny layer is thin. This should be um, a communication interface between the data and the UI, so the interface. So this is usually what we see when we uh, join different companies and work with them. There is a server, there is UI, and there is plenty of communication happening between the front end and the back end. And uh, what you should be doing to make your application fast is first, you should make sure that uh, a lot of operations that do not need any communication with server happen on the front end, and uh, that the server actually calls the external services to fetch the data and to filter the data there not inside of the memory of uh, your machine. And then you can add as many machines as you want. So let's take a look at the first one, uh, leveraging the front end. Few very simple things that you can do to already scale your application. Um, I'm going to go through them uh, very briefly. First one, render inputs in UI and only update them in server.r. This is a very simple thing that you can already apply to your applications. 
very often people uh, create a UI output in the UI, and then they put all of the rendering in the backend. This requires uh, re-rendering the whole widget whenever the input, uh, whenever the other inputs change, and this makes the application slower. What instead you can do is you can render the numeric input on the front end and only update the input on the server. Very simple change already gives you a lot of uh, leverage. Second part, you can inline JavaScript code with Shiny.js package uh, by Di Natali. A very simple thing that allows you to call JavaScript right from the server and you don't have to generate the whole HTML on the backend, but you can just ask JavaScript to toggle some changes in the UI without actually going back and forth. And the, the third one is to set all actions in JavaScript without server.r part. So when you create, for example, an action button, you can right away create an on-click hook for the JavaScript call. And what is important here is that if you have skilled people in your team and you have created a great application that is used by a lot of people and you want that your uh, team members to grow, the JavaScript is a natural next step for them to learn, to make the applications robust, look better, and move faster. Let's talk about uh, extracting computations. First idea is to use a remote API, and Plumber from our studio is a great package to do that. Uh, so when you think about your application, you shouldn't load the entire data set to your application. Instead, you can ask external services uh, to filter the data for you, and you just show the user the excerpt of the data that is useful. Because very often, as Pedro mentioned, uh, you don't need to put too much information to the user. They just want to see what they need. Then you can very easily wrap data extraction logic into a simple API uh, with Plumber. Uh, this is done just by adding uh, special comments. Uh, there is a great documentation about it. So uh, make sure that you check it out if you don't know Plumber. And what is really important is that you can easily deploy this with RStudio Connect. So just as you have your applications running on RStudio Connect, with a click of a button, you can also deploy API. And many applications can actually use the same API, which allows you to reuse your code across many different projects. Side note, make sure to use efficient data libraries, uh, because very often when you have an API, you want to share some data, and you very often also read it from the, uh, from the disk. Actually, there are many different packages for reading data, and you can read a huge amount of uh, data without affecting the memory of the system uh, a lot. So make sure you check out those packages and check how they actually improve their performance. Sometimes just changing the library that you use for manipulating data uh, can unblock a lot of potential in your application. So for the extracting computations, the second part that is uh, very often um, important and uh, crucial for the uh, for the applications is to start using a database. Um, the success story usually starts with a simple application and the data is just loaded into memory. Looks fine. I have a UI, I have data, and then I have server that uh, filters the data and uh, shows the results to the user. Just a simple application. However, if the file is big, like for example, one gigabyte, it's going to cause you some trouble. Um, first, when you have just five users, RC Connect is going to distribute them evenly uh, between processes, and uh, they are not going to use, for example, three gigabytes of RAM. Um, if you have 13 users, it can get a little bit more, but the, the machine is going to handle it well. However, the more users uh, use your application, the more processes you have to create, and each process is going to keep the same object in the memory. So it is crucial for you to, instead of uh, putting all of the data into memory, to put it away to a database and to just use uh, filter methods uh, and uh, different selections to get the data that you need. And then your machine is going to be very light, very thin, and you can have a, a huge amount of users using your application and the database is going to handle all of them. Um, also important thing to know is that you can use dbplyr to use uh, different filtering just as you are manipulating data with uh, dbplyr. So let's talk about the architecture. Uh, we all know Shiny Server open source. It allows us to very quickly deploy the application. Um, right away, after you deploy the application, you will see that RStudio Connect uh, is a great choice to have multiple processes, uh, to have better control on how users use your application. Um, and uh, it also has a great functionality of uh, being able to deploy the applications with a single click of a button. What we like to use uh, on our side is we use Ansible 
uh, to provision the whole infrastructure. So imagine you have a bare metal uh, machine. With Ansible, you can install all of the packages that are needed for RStudio Connect. Then you can install RStudio Connect. And then you can even deploy the application because you have a great package, RS Connect, which has the whole API to deploy uh, applications from the command line. Uh, so really, um, I, I think that uh, everyone who does uh, the development on a high scale, on a big scale, uh, using Ansible is a really good choice. Now, this is the architecture that you would have for your applications. You set up multiple servers, and they all have to be behind the load balancer with a sticky session. And they all have to connect to the same database. They have the authentication mechanism and the shared disk. Um, as a bonus, there is also a great option uh, that you can use uh, so that, for example, you can have an um, offline mobile application uh, that is using uh, endpoints that are deployed to uh, RStudio Connect with Plumber. So this is also something that we have done uh, successfully. So there is plenty of things that you can do, and I encourage you to try them.